to Ek Sambad at Arunim Ankuran. Teachers should be the best people, the best minds in the country. Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan said that on the occasion of Teacher's Day, Aruni Mankuran is delighted and grateful to have Dr. Bhimraya Metri, Director IIM Nagpur, as our guest. Uh, welcome to Ek Samvad, sir. Management, management education in post-COVID scenario is what we'll be talking about today. A word about Aruni Mankuran. This is an initiative for positive social change through self-development. The goal is greater well-being and happiness for all. At Aruni Mankuran, we believe that each person is unique and special in some way, that each person can make a difference, that each one can make an impact, and that is what inspires us every day. Dr. Bhim Rai Maitri, Director IIM Nagpur, is a distinguished academician, renowned teacher, researcher, and an astute administrator. An outstanding leader of management education, he has performed key leadership roles at many premier institutions and corporates in his remarkable career. He is the former director of IIM Trichy. He has also contributed immensely as the dean at LNT Institute of Project Management, Vadodara, IMI, New Delhi, MD Gurgaon, and leading research programs at Abits Pilani. Uh, I'm so grateful, sir, that you could time, find time for us and you've joined us today. So we'll be talking uh, to you about the major challenges for management educators, the role of values, the impact of the pandemic on the pedagogy, uh, tips for students to optimize learning and uh, invest in self-development at this point of time. Uh, what are the skills that they need to develop in the future? How has the student response been to online teaching and uh, strategies for thriving in uh, post-COVID times. So uh, once again, sir, very warm welcome to you. And um, yeah. I think uh, we will start off from uh, what was some, uh, some of the first things that you did at IIM Nagpur uh, when the COVID came. When COVID came, I think uh, I was in another IIM, I am Pirusra Pardi. So we were there in Tirusrapalli uh, when COVID started. First of all, we were already uh, into e-learning system and all our setup was ready because last one year we were trying e-learning system mm -hmm. and that was set up and, and it was going to be ready for postgraduate certificate program. By the time COVID came and all the set was ready and we were lucky that we used for the, our MBA program. So without uh, any time, tender, in government one has to go for tender and all those things, without taking any time, we were the first one to get into straightway online education for our postgraduate students. And some changes, what we did is uh, uh, since uh, 90 minutes class and uh, students one up to the 15 minutes gap was there, we initially introduced a gap of 30 minutes. Because, uh, you know, online, uh, attention span has to be announced. Otherwise, you know, in face-to-face, -face, one can, uh, because of emotional connect and you can see each other, you can listen to unspoken in the, in the you know, close proximity and face-to-face. -face. But in remote, mm -hmm. uh, it is difficult to, you know, catch the attention of the students for longer time. So that is how after 90 minutes, we, we increase 15 minutes to 30 minutes and we experimented for one month and we continued and, and that the students interaction, faculty interaction, we proved a good one and we continued. Mm -hmm. And during the COVID only last year, October, I moved to I am Nagpur and here also, uh, I think uh, by the time the system was almost six months uh, uh, you know, old for the COVID and here everything was going online. What we did is after coming over here, and uh, some of the students, those who were part of the rural India, they were facing a problem of connectivity and bandwidth. And uh, you know that in India, a huge country, and there is a huge digital divide. Yes. And even person like me, you know, I, I came from a very small village and son of the farmer. And I know that in, in today in my village, uh, there is no doctor, no hospital, no ATM, no bank, and no internet. But people have mobiles nowadays. 
So many such villages are there in India. So the moment I came here, we we, we made a decision that uh, students, those who are in the second tier and third tier town and villages, those who are facing this difficulty, they should be called within the protocol of the COVID. With the social distancing, we arranged their accommodation uh, in the campus. Those who are facing that problem. And some of them were told that we can't get many people at a time. We decided 30 at a time and after a gap of three week, four week. And others told that you can you can move to your relative place, you know, from small village to bigger town. And there you can the bandwidth is good and all you can go. And some of the people shifted to bigger cities. And in the second round, third round, we got them. This is how. Uh, that uh, uh, the bandwidth time, uh, <coughs> the remote learning process, we we smoothen. And another important part, the, uh, you know, faculty member those who used to teach face to face earlier, everybody, and now it, it has become a mandatory. You know, there is no question of I am old man, I don't know how to operate. That option was not there, so everybody was doing. But I took a review and I also talking to the faculty member, you know, the way you teach face to face, same thing if you teach here, the same pedagogy used, probably it's not going to be there. Yes. So you as a faculty member, what you teach in face to face, there uh, the traditional teaching works well and effectiveness. But when it comes to a new environment, many times, you know, students used to uh, you know, they, they disappear from uh, listening and all, you know, keeping it uh, on and all. And then it was compulsory they have to appear in the screen. That is one one thing, you know, students have been made. And second, what it is to draw the attention and to engage them, uh, our pedagogy, what we say, we have to introduce the digital, the advancement of digital technology is already there. How to make use of the technology? So I told my faculty, colleagues, you know, why can't you try to suddenly, you know, first of all, when you enter the class, you should not behave as a faculty, but you should act as a mentor or advisor. The moment you become mentor or advisor, everybody is eagerly waiting to get the mentor seat or coaching and advice. Because the moment advice means you are a viewer. Mm -hmm. And the moment you are a viewer means you will be first asking how is the COVID in your area, what is happening, how many cases, I hope your all family members are safe, you know. All those kind of things you are inquiring and take care, be safe, you know. Act as a guardian, act as an advisor, act as a mentor. So then you are basically trying them in your boundary of influence. The moment they come into your area of influence, then you start teaching. Then even though if you teach more than 90 minutes, their attention span will be all the time towards the faculty. So that is how instead of faculty, instructor, you have to be an advisor or mentor. So that is one experiment we did and that worked well and, and even students say, so this method worked well. And this is one part, this is, uh, and second, the uh, use of digital technology, you know, suddenly in between, you will just get into the opinion poll, you know, how do you think about it, how many of you agree, how many of you disagree, you know, you will raise the hand and you will not raise the hand, you will say yes, you will say no. So you are bringing energy to the class. That is one, you know, uh, a poll. And second one, we introduced the podcast, you know, the accomplished person, you know, people like, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, 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 you know, we recently had two days, Harsh, Harsh Mariwala's, uh, you know, uh, life story, he has published the book. Mm -hmm. So what we did is the great personalities, those who are accomplished and success stories, why can't you briefly, uh, uh, you know, give a podcast of, you know, 10, 15 minutes about the great personalities and discussions should go on. Companies like Latham and to grow ITC, HDF, HDFC, you know, like that. And then discussion can go on, and the students are very curious to know how impossible thing has happened as it possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, basically curious because everybody would like to listen to the students. Yes. So in the form of storytelling, use the technology and and somebody's voice and somebody will be telling. And then faculty and students, they will see that particular story in a different perspective. You know, a magic of multi-perspective one can see. So yeah. that kind of discussion uh, using the technology. Hmm. Apart from that, we also introduced some kind of simulations. Simulations in the sense, uh, the moment you get into simulation, students have to be, you know, active player in that simulation. 
Yes. The moment you are active, there is no question of attention span. You are always in the attention span. And also some of the uh, you know online games. The moment you are into games, when you are playing a game with some other team, mm-hmm. then you see that winning spirit is there. True. At the same time, at the same time, what happens when, as a student, uh, you know, group of students, uh, apart from winning spirit, you also take a higher risk. You also do some mistake while playing first round, second round, and you will learn from your own mistake and sharpen your decision making skill in such games without any price paying for that. Otherwise, in real life, you have to pay heavy price for doing the mistake. Very so, apart from that, they also end up their tenacity. You know, multiple thinking, multiple skill. They can you know tenacity, curiosity, courage. and confidence all those things they can achieve it while playing the game in a group with the some other team mm-hmm. so some team a may lose first two and team b may win first two but after first two team a will a uh, win eight out of 10 and b will lose eight out of 10 so end of that you know 10 rounds probably faculty member need not to go for any examination to assess their speaking capability tenacity courage all those competency you know, and also communication skill and how to collaborate you know collaborative skills all those things they learn and we can straight away assess the students and today whatever the evaluation system you know out of 90 90 it is a stone age evaluation system you know, it, it doesn't Uh, talk anything about the courage, anything about the confidence, anything about the you know, curiosity. So mm-hmm. this test, maybe somebody is having highest marks, but he may be a, a, a worst man as an entrepreneur. He mm-hmm. may not uh, uh, produce any result out of that. So that is how that that the the learning and evaluation there has to be a sync and connect, and it also has to connect to the concrete. Mm-hmm. So that is how we have the few changes we have brought. And that gave a good result, and they, it, it went so smoothly. And otherwise, you know, uh, Pragya Ji, that uh, government of India would have spent hundreds of crores of rupees to transit people from offline to online. If they introduce it, the broader scheme, probably money would have been spent, but ninety uh, percent would not have been transitioned to this online world. Yes. So this is the one, and also we customize some of the course material. You know, e e learning books we supply, and some of the cases we change from long cases to the short cases because reading habits are gone to the students, and that is how we introduce the podcast and all. A brief case and uh, you know caselets we introduce each of the bigger bigger cases. Mm-hmm. Of so mm-hmm. these are the things that we brought and we brought the books here at Nagpur. That's really amazing, sir. It's like embracing the future even before it came. You know, you were so well prepared for it. I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how have your students responded in terms of their readiness to embrace the change? You know. No, you see, first of all, when crisis, you know, somebody has said, "Our first prime minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, said, 'Crisis are the best friends of innovation.' Hmm. So when you are walking." On a straight road and dead end comes, then only you think whether I have to go to left or right because there is a dead end. Otherwise, we would have walked just like that. So that is how when the crisis comes and then there is no option. So straight way, first of all, it is a learning for students, learning for faculty, learning for everybody. So it 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 it, it, it was a experimental ground or battlefield for learning for everybody. and uh, everybody was adjusting readjusting this was the process for initial six months now everybody is a master in that you know, whether it is a student or faculty everybody was and even you know many of the things uh, probably happens online most of the students uh, activities tomorrow zoom is there all the you know ten girls use are coming and there it is everything is online so now they have developed the mastery How to do everything online? So it takes a short time, and now a lot of learning curve has come for students and as well as faculty side. So we have moved from one level to the next level, and which is reasonably, you know, great and smooth curve for learning. So what are some of the core values that have been driving your decisions 
with reference to uh, how you've taken it forward after the COVID? No, core values, you see, uh, I think uh, uh, there are two things, you know, when the, along with the time, along with the context, the values also change. You know, normally, uh, or I can say core principles, you know, fundamental principles, principles are nothing but assumptions. So, if you are with the old assumption, you are operating in 21st century, then we will neither keep the values and nor produce the result in 21st century. So, along with the time, the core values also change. For example, in education sector, the fundamental principle core value was a stakeholder at the core, at the center. Keeping the stakeholder at the center, education is to look into that. Stakeholder means one side students and the other side the corporate work. Mm -hmm. So education has to take care of these two. You know, keeping stakeholder at the center, you have to you have to make all your teaching, learning around your tomorrow. And if you look at the corporate world, the shareholder value, that was the principle. You know, how to uh, increase you know more money for the shareholder who those who have invested in the corporate. These were the principle much before, but now you might have seen in NEP National Education Policy 2020. Now the fundamental principle has shifted from stakeholder to people and planet first. Profit comes much later. So people and planet is the central principle for education. Mm -hmm. Sustainable development goals are the central principle for education. Mm -hmm. Global citizenship is a central principle for the education. And global responsibility is a central principle for the education. Earlier, we used to talk about institution responsibilities, corporate responsibilities. You know, citizen I belongs to this state, this city, this country. Now we have moved away from country to global social responsibility. And that is how in NEP, if you look into the important one of the, the key uh, part of NEP is multidisciplinary approach. So when teaching the course to the student, I will be looking from many per perspectives, multiple perspectives. So magic of different perspectives take the student to the global perspective and global citizen and holistic human being and building a character. All these things are you know, important points in the edu new education policy. So building a character, holistic human being only comes when you bring them to the global person, not you know Indian or, or, or German or, or Chinese. But you know global perspective comes only when one subject, when you are teaching a course, for example, you are teaching a course on something in the in the area of say production management, operations management. Then I may teach a course where I want to reduce the cost. Of, of a particular, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in production area where engine is involved, where fuel is involved, transport, let us example. Now, if you want to reduce the cost, then you have to see two perspectives. One is how to bring the efficiency in fuel so that you can reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. Second perspective is I can redesign the engine itself, then the cost will come down. So two perspectives I will see and then I may operate on two perspectives or I can operate any one of them which which happen with the least cost. And this is how we are giving multiple perspectives to the students and that is how uh, you might have seen multidisciplinary. Or there are three kinds of colleges in new education policy. One is multidisciplinary education and research universities. It is called as a Meru multi disciplinary m education e and research universities are you so meru is one second one is the comprehensive teaching university comprehensive teaching universities mostly undergrad education where research happens a little bit less and teaching is more focused that is a comprehensive teaching university and meru is uh, it is highly research focused but also teaching is there and the third category Degree granting colleges. Degree granting colleges today, IIMs, ICER, IPLITES, mm -hmm. uh, National Law University, these are all the autonomous degree granting. But the, the, the mandate put now for those colleges, they can't run the institute capacity of 300, 400,000, 2,000. Now the mandate is they have to take the capacity to the 3,000 and above. 
then only they will be allowed to run as a degree granting colleges so these are the category they brought and everywhere multi disciplinary is one of the important aspect even in engineering they have to teach humanities and social science and other like in management they have to get to you know uh, the uh, the uh, uh, liberal art has to dance with management absolutely absolutely these are the things and now uh, that is how you know because to build the holistic perspective today in management particularly management education if you look into that people uh, slowly started focusing only one important component that is money 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 or profit 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 so why doing that they forgotten the people they forgotten the human being and they forgotten all other living being and they also forgotten the planet so that is where from materialistic life to holistic human being and from holistic human being to the all living being hmm. But if you look at the history, Pragyaji, if you look at the history long, long ago, human beings were also part of the all living being and we are partnering with the all insects and animals. But in, later on, nowadays, we are not, we are, we are, you know, basically ruling the all other living being and not only all other living being, we also started fighting as a human being, developed countries, developing countries and, and mm-hmm. all kinds of third world countries. and we are and particularly developed countries have damaged the planet in such a extent that 1.75 times of the natural resources have been used by the developed countries and then future generation probably is going to be endangered if we use that that is where uh, the 17 sustainable development goals the united nations come out and 2030 supposed to be and and, and we, our new education policy also talks about uh, we need to take care of Mm-hmm. so this is how a profit is essential you know in the new term is called es mm-hmm. environment society and governance these are the three things are going to play important role and nep has taken care of and that is how i say the new education policy is a gold standard and it is going to again recall the golden days of india's education sector nalanda takshilai and probably if this uh, and, and it is appreciated by a lot of uh, you know uh, even other nations and and i, I am particularly involved because they interviewed 127 experts and i was one of them when i was a director of iitchi and they have taken two management experts i i quickly called and interacted with many committee members so so this is going to be a gold standard not only for india many countries are also going to take part of it they want to incorporate in their education mm-hmm. probably india will become a vishu guru one it is one it is mm-hmm. and i mean the implementation bring the success not the policy bring the success mm-hmm. so yeah. the, the bridging that policy and the result in between is the implementation and that is what going to play important role what degree of success we have but current moment if you look into that government has made a nine task force i am part of one of the task force and i am sure the government is very keen and and that implementation in big way and probably will make a large success wonderful so so heartening to hear this idea sir that you know we are going back to the holistic picture it's it, it's been bits and pieces for far too long Uh, one of one of the things that i look at uh, in terms of online learning is that uh, probably the responsibility of the students has increased so there is more opportunity for self development in terms of their own skill sets that they get developed what do you think about this and what are some of the tips you would like to share with students so that they can optimize their learning at this point of time i think uh, there are the one is the, as you rightly said anything new you bring even in a home if you go to the department store or malls and bring some new item which is never seen unseen something new mm-hmm. then curious automatically comes everybody is looking towards that you know suppose somebody say there is a surya grahan you need not you should not see towards the sun then you know never see towards the sun every day but on that day definitely ke chutke thoda sa to hum dekh lete so that is what normally happens if you bring something new or new tools and new technique the curiosity comes in you know, let us experiment let us see how it works so this is how that something new 
make them to trigger them to learn and see and experiment and also compare with the ages and that is where a uh, students as you rightly say students uh, definitely uh, they it is a it is a it is a it is a battlefield for their experiment so all kinds of experiment they do you know nowadays also there is a waiting room in the online itself they make a waiting room and then they will allow so lot of experiments they are doing at virtual reality augmented mixed reality even engineering college experiments are happening in a sitting room in a room Mm-hmm. And and uh, you know I was in L and T when yeah they 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 chemical you know hydrocarbon business you know how the uh, the hot uh, you know uh, uh, whatever the you know, material flows chemical flows you can see through drones you did not to visit the plant and all you can sit in mm-hmm. office you can everything how construction is going on this side and today three D printing you know three D printing you know. you can print the car you can print the house mm-hmm. and you can as well and even people are talking about printing of heart also and filling the life in that so like that so lot of uh, this technology is there and students the younger generation you know today probably uh, uh, prakashi yourself and myself and our earlier generation uh, it was very clear that we always listen to our parents and now we are in such a generation we are listen to our parents and we are listening to our uh, kids <laughs> because we are in between and here onwards it is very clear that there is a reversal younger ones are more smarter in digital technology digital area and, and probably something happened to mobile or anything we will give to them and within no time they set it right and we can't do that yes so this is a kind of generation and you know they immediately go to the google they find out everything you know even though they may not be you know one weakness of the younger generation is i must say they know everything but they don't know in depth they know little little but everything they mm-hmm. that is the big difference deeper depth if you ask they don't know and they said i don't want to know that it is not um, i only want this and this is there for me so this is how today generation they are they are far far broad minded and they can learn many things that they know but deeper depth one part you know comparing to you know one generation of persons so that is how experimentation this is the life of experiment and i i must say uh, a pratnya ji that uh, very important this is a highly connected world this online because of digital disruption and technology highly connected means you know today generation they are connected to facebook linkedin and and all kinds of you know social media and uh, whom they never met and they never seen all part of the world mm-hmm. not today but at the same time these highly connected people they highly disconnected their roots mm-hmm. highly disconnected their natives their native place and their traditions we have disconnected with our indian tradition mm-hmm. if you ask the younger generation about you know our uh, our indian or indian mythos our traditions our system probably this i don't know my father was doing my grandfather was doing, but i don't know this has this is one of the drawback of the younger generation mm-hmm. and this drawback is going to be a heavy heavy price for country like india because we have become more european and american than european and american because we are when britishers left last 50 years we have become more european and american than when britishers were then because we slowly adopted their system but our tradition we left and the biggest disadvantage of this is this disconnect with our roots and tradition or traditional knowledge and indian ethos today you know we talk about satya nadella is, is is a great sense maker in the world arvind krishna ibm or you talk about uh, you know jima uh, uh, you know sangeeta or sharma or deloitte all the top leaders of the top companies in the world are india and why indians are there where the top companies are there the question may come even indra muni even pandit from our nagpur was there in city bank so all the great leaders they attended the great companies 
this happened because all these people they their childhood they spent with their grandparents and grandparents used to give the core values indian ethos ramayana mahabharata vedas you know all those our indian traditional knowledge and system and what are the do's and don'ts they used to teach and all the kids grandchildren are like grandparents than their parents yes but today what is happening is because of the job and now this digital technological advancement we are moved away from our roots our native places our country we are scattered like uh, in different part of the world now our kids are given to the maid no mm-hmm. so maid can't teach all these things and that is how this in our indian system we became more european and american and then we have to go we have to work in the many times you know both the parents are working and then you have to give the maid and you have to entertain and something but we have left out you know we are deprived the kids from those values yes. and that is where in new education policy if you look into that for primary education 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 it is introduced keeping in mind that grandparents are not going to add value to the younger generation and that is where we have made five five in the sense before coming to the lkg and all in kids have to spend some time for building the value indian ethos and values if you look at japan first three year there are no examinations everybody has to just they inculcate japanese values and for standard onward there are examination for the knowledge starts for standard onwards till the third standard it is all about core of their countries right so indian ethos are also going to be put in you know that is why 5 plus 3 plus 3 mm-hmm. plus 4 that is up to 12 and that is how we have incorporated in new education policy and that is how golden and golden days are going to come for our younger generation even though grand parents in this thing they may miss but they are going to get it from the education system and that is what uh, you know it has been introduced and and uh, this online has many many uh, you know advantages probably you know uh, day before yesterday i i did a four meetings in you know, one meeting with aridya committee for technical education one meeting i did i ma you know jury meeting i did aridya matter association mm-hmm. one i did meeting with my institute another one i did with them if it would not have been possible if face to face i would have done only one in one time with all the four i did that is the biggest advantage of online but at the same time the younger generation so much things to do information overloading is going to be the challenge so what to see what not to see probably you know there is a limit for everything so if you don't keep this in mind you know for for exploring opportunity we should not limit but normally we limit there mm-hmm. but in my look at the information we have to limit which is beyond your boundary which is nothing to do otherwise if you open the internet many things keeps on coming we should mm-hmm. not get it right and that will divert our attention probably and that may not be the best right while exploring yes mm-hmm. education that so so with reference to uh, you know character building and inculcating values for example it's a very big challenge even in ordinary circumstances but what about now is there something innovative that perhaps educators can do so that uh, this this time is used in a way that children come back stronger not only in terms of their intellect but also in terms of their value system yeah so that is where the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 you see mm-hmm. uh, you know first of all there are i told you nine task forces government of india has made minister mm-hmm. education first and foremost is the teacher education every level there is a teacher education unless until teacher believe in, in the value system if they agree believe and if the, they start practice they can't teach the students so first change first transformation has to happen at teacher so, so that is one and you might have also in the in the regulation you might have seen in the new education policy light and tight word has been used very categorically regulation is very light and and it is it is tightly monitored so there is no tolerance if somebody violates they are going to be taken at all 
So that is how light uh, earlier over regulation was there. If you look into the any education you know, for any uh, typical uh, any college, so the university LIC, you know, local inquiry committee from university. If it is a professional directorate of technical education, mm. you know, Bombay will come and uh, not university will come. And if it is a professional AICT will come, all India Council for Technology. And also university grant commission will come, NAC will come, NBA will come. So many agencies will come and throughout the year you have to do and where is the time to teach. So that more regulation was there, now it has been made very light and tight and restructuring has been done to transform. So that is why this transformation is, is basically it is a 360 degree transformation. And keeping everything in mind and, and main focus as the building character and holistic being and took to care of all living being and planet. You know, that is that is important. Uh, you know, uh, didn't uh, take away of this particular education policy. You have to respect all living being and respect the planet so that future generation also use the natural resources what we are using. Many generation also use ample resources for their lifetime when they are you know, coming to the planet. So that is what it has been kept. So that is how it is a transformation change. And mm -hmm. as I told you, and again, it is how, what degree of attribution and what degree of success it depends upon the how we achieve. So attribution is going to play important role, and success is going to come out. Wow, sir, uh, you have so much experience, you know, in uh, as an educator. What are some of your uh, most precious memories as a teacher? I think as a teacher, uh, you see, memories means, uh, you know, uh, one important, uh, you know, uh, I can say, you know, few, there are few, but I will come with the most important one, you know, as a teacher, earlier I was in engineering college, I taught in Shivaji University, Bombay University, before doing PhD and going to Pixpilani, and then, then I entered into management education computers. Mm -hmm. So my memory, I, as a teacher, uh, and being the engineering background, I was very disciplined one night and uh, very, you know, commitment for the time. You know, the regularity, discipline is important. And if somebody is coming late, I never used to talk. You have to be there as per the normal the time. If you are really interested to learn, your state of mind, you can make up once you are 10 minutes before in the class. Otherwise, you are rushing from somewhere, from meeting something, you know, breakfast, you are coming inside, those things I never used to talk. And discipline and, 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 and as long as they used to be in the campus, mm -hmm. they used to be afraid of me and also and they used to they may not like you know the, the students always in the easy way and comfort zone they like it. But once they go out of the college and they get the job in the corporate world, and then their love and affinity and affection to the teachers starts growing. And those who used to support them, all those kind of indiscipline, they start telling about them, you know, those professors, you know, I would have learned many things that they used to just do the mass, this and that. You know, that kind of events, they go out, all the tough teachers are remembered once students graduate. And during the college, they remember tough teacher for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. But once they go, they remember, and, and I know the, some of you know my one of my students at India. He is the you know today he is the uh, number two in uh, Bondi, Chennai. He is a board member and senior vice president. He is in touch with every teachers terms. and somebody you, know, you might be doing. Uh, some of my earlier uh, alumni, some of the students, you know, they, they are all in working with different companies, many entrepreneurs. But uh, they, they always, you know, the teachers take on, you know, the, the all those, you know, sir, you taught on that day, this, uh, this I still remember. Those memories are extremely good. And then and, and the biggest asset for teacher is your, your students, when they become alumni, when they start recognizing, then you realize I have done something. You know, as a teacher, I get a good job. And after graduation, when they become alumni, they don't remember, recall means, and I have to, you know, there is, there is something wrong with me, I have to change. That is one lesson for me, and, and in that part, I was extremely busy. Second one, when I, as a teacher, I always, you know, used to focus, in, as a teacher means, 
you should not be a delivery manager you know in a railway station bus adda you go so person will be taking the load from one place and putting another place and charging the money that is what we call delivery so but here in, in any education the three things are important knowledge creation knowledge distribution knowledge so only reading somebody's book i am teaching to the students it's not job of the teacher and nowadays a ppt has come you know download the ppt and tons of ppt you show and you know that power corrupts and power points corrupts you know? so the ppt has spoiled a lot of things you know basically uh, uh, the kind of preparation teachers supposed to do you know lot of preparation one has to do and you have to take you have to trigger the students to ask intelligent questions it is not that giving the knowledge now google is giving all the knowledge now job of teacher is how to make them to ask intelligent questions probably you may not be able to answer so that is how the preparation i used to do you know without homework i never used to do mm-hmm. that is fun and and if at all if anything happened when administration term i was a examiner in charge of public university i said i said i will not take this thing I will take, uh, take class or class on Sunday, but I, I am not. But I used to tell, but I never used to just go and show some PPT and all. That is one part. So homework, uh, basically, you, every class you learn, you learn something. New. And I never used to keep any old material. When I next year, again everything new because otherwise I will repeat the last year experience as a second year. Experience. Mm-hmm. So one year experience you will repeat for many years if you keep those materials. always restart with the clean and this is how you can you can see the things from different perspectives different lenses and teach the same course and probably first time you know when when i still remember when i started uh, 89 teaching transportation course uh, in engineering my teacher used to teach and said you have to teach and join first day and second day course i made a preparation of 6 hours and i went to the class and uh, my entire material you know it was for 45 minutes class and i finished in 43 minutes mm. or minutes were there and then then i decided let us take attendance i took attendance mm. <laughs> of course attendance is also counted then you know but but today you see when you are raw at that time as a teacher you know you, you are starting it is the starting point But if you gain experience, your learning curve goes up, and you keep on teaching, and you keep on giving different perspectives. So that giving different perspective, you can show the students to the whole world. You can open up many windows, and you can show them. And intelligent students, how much deep to go each window and each door, they will decide, and they will become expert. When you see your student as a as a you know now I is a board member of Mumbai and somebody you know paper for Diraj Kakkar you know such you know he is an MBA student I mean so when I saw he is tomorrow he is going to come to you know our webinar in Delhi so when such you know people I mean I came and you know I am very proud you know how our students have done the great job and we are we these are the proud moments. when they grow and then move the higher heights and reach their everest so those are the proud moment as a teacher and apart from that uh, you know i always uh, you know young age when i was a student professor i got into administration which i was phd in charge and then um, when i was associate and teacher so very young age i started into administration and even as a dean i was 15 years before becoming you know the director of the chair of the department of education so administration was also my passion and, and wherever i did i always uh, change the system changing the status quo is always in mind if you don't the, if you don't change the status quo then you are unfit to that post that is what my my always you know take i always used to say somebody if you are not interested you should not sit on that chair and rest that chair if you are sitting as a administrator as a director as a dean as a vice chair Then you have to show your color, and I mean, nobody should ask what did you do. You were there for so many years. People should know what you have done. So that is what I always, and whether you take Rich Pilani, I was you know was the PMG chair project. I was I was in charge of Punjab, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, three states as a teacher for technical agency. MBA involved. I was there for eight and a half years as a dean, 
I have traveled around almost uh, you know, uh, total 29 countries and, and, uh, uh, and so many universities, business schools, and a and lot of uh, international exchanges. So these are the contributions that you, know, you will be known by your contribution. So if there are no contribution, then probably we are not giving justice to the country. So that always I keep in mind and probably I am the one, uh, you know, uh, 15 years as a dean and then in the second after three years coming to Nagpur here. Mm -hmm. So if you don't make any different status, so that is why when I joined Nagpur, I am Nagpur October 2006, when I gave an interview to Anasapidi, I said, I am Nagpur has to be top 10 in coming five years. I made a statement. So this statement, if I don't do it, then, then something, you know, I'm not done my job. Mm -hmm. So, so automatically, I, it is not making a statement, but if you see the result in you know, every month, first 30 days, first 60 days, first 90 days, now I have completed almost, you know, coming six I complete every one month here in this institute. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the visible result already they are there. So if they are not there, then probably I, I am not doing my job. So that is why I always see that contribution should be visible and loud and also uh, as an administrator it is also important that my role as a director as a dean is we have to prepare a video hmm. I am coming from a place you know, in the I will go. In the I is the natural director to I and I am one amongst them. My mentor was. So our plan here is also I am Nagpur. I am Nagpur in the tradition many directors of the business. And, and, and that is the job direct. So not, you know, leaders create leaders. Yes. That is most important. Not leaders create problems. So leaders have to create leaders. And, and that is what, you know, as a sitting on the road, as a teacher, as a director, so our job is to prepare the pipeline. Mm -hmm. so these are some of the memories and I have done, I think, uh, and, and probably, you know, many places as a team, and uh, as a you know, director, so wherever I worked, uh, I was in LNT, I was, uh, uh, you know, I was the dean of LNT structure. My first time after 25 years corporate, uh, you know, uh, academic life, I moved to the corporate and then somebody, I asked whether I could be there at LNT. Every activity is a profit mm -hmm. They gave me a target. So after paying all the expenses, we have to do all these things. And when I took a charge, and I was there for eleven months because I got a you know appointment for Trichy. So then I not only met the target, seventy-three percent more than the target I got. Mm -hmm. So that is what you know, that is what contribution. Otherwise, target means you have done your job. Mm -hmm. But if you do much, if you go for extra mile, that is a real contribution. So that is what I always, you know, always, you know, you have to add few deltas over the what the target is, what is given and what you set. So that is what I believe. And these are some of the good memories, whether it is a bit spilani, you know, when I was there, it was number three, after IIT Kanpur, IIT Kanpur, it was number three. And then I was in India, after Abdabad, Kanpur, Kalkata, India, it was number three, but no five, XLR, six, 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 six. And then I went to IMI, it used to be 38 when I worked up four years, 2016. 2016, first year, NIR, this IMI New Delhi, it was the only private school appearing as a number seven within the uh, uh, top 10 government institutions in the League of IMs, it was coming number seven. And then I moved to Trichy and I worked there. and, and then, when my term was there, I was called there, I came here. But there also in three and a half years, Trichy born is the time, which is position first after the first generation I am. Wow. <laughs> so, and, and here also, Nagpur, I am sure, is going to be one of the great business schools. Not only in the country, but we are also expanding to Southeast Asia and that is going to be which is coming from the, the heart of the heartland, Nagpur. Mm -hmm. What an amazing journey, sir. And, uh, you know, when you speak with so much passion, I'm so curious now to know where do you get your inspiration from? 
You see, inspiration, uh, it, is, it is always, you know, I think uh, my mentor, Professor Pritam Singh, was uh, you know, my mentor. Uh, actually, when I was in Bich Kilani, I moved to India, he was the director. Mm -hmm. And came from I am Lucknow, he was the director of India, he went to Lucknow and he came here, but he was the only Patna in, 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 in uh, first I am director to get a Patna so she was, uh, he appointed me, and then there I was still, you know, last year, June, he's no more now. Uh, but uh, till that, he, he's always, you know, my mentor, source of inspiration. And uh, he worked in Lucknow, he worked in uh, IMD, I wrote the places he worked in, today out of 20, I am director. More than 10 belongs to his basket. You know, Lucknow and India together is, uh, you know, there are 11 people uh, as a director. Mm -hmm. India alone is given 11 director to IIM. And when it is the credit goes to me, used to always be the best problem. I, I used to work very closely with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he moved to IIM, I left the MDI, such a great school, and which is unknown. I am not that guy who he said, Can you come? I said, Sir, if you say, if I come, then you can think you are doing government and it is not known. It's not great school. I said, so you feel much better for me than what I feel. So I joined, I joined him. And in four years, we changed the transform that institution. Mm -hmm. Totally, it was a duty education, it was nothing. We did the 16 crore education. Faculty was 30, we took it to 70. Program was one with 120, we needed to 240. And we created two more programs. We created infrastructure of 45 crores. So I then uh, when it, it came number, number in private it was number one and in the government B it was number seven within the league of IM. At that time I left and joined the league. Mm -hmm. So most of the places wherever the institution reached the top, I think that was the year I left. It is it is coincidentally, it is not by you know any you know, MDI it was the top, I moved to IMI. IMI became top, I left and went to LA. Mm -hmm. And similarly, Trichy became top and I moved to Matthew. So this has been my journey and I to it. Wonderful. Uh, so because we are talking on the occasion of Teacher's Day, in the context of Teacher's Day, uh, talk to us about your teachers. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I, 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 I am the first generation educator. My father was the former, you know, post-standard Marathi study, and my mother, my father is no more, my mother uh, illiterate, and she's there in my native place. She knows only my son is an engineer. She doesn't, she doesn't understand IIT, IIM, my daughter. She only engineer she knows, and still to me, she says, my son is an engineer. And we ask what your son is doing. So I studied from, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a small uh, uh, Jilla Pasha school uh, in, in my, you know, again, my test is about of Maharashtra Patataka, the medium of instruction was Kanda, I used to do And that is a dotty area of Sangli district, Sangli, area. So I studied from Jagdi, but uh, one thing, my childhood uh, uh, in my village is in all surrounding village, our teachers are extremely good. Always, you know, after third standard onwards, you have to you have to go to the teacher's house, and evening eight to ten, you have to you know, with within those days, kerosene, you have to carry that uh, lamp, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to go to teacher's house, and teacher's houses are given, you know, all farmers used to give their houses to the teachers was free of cost. Farmers used to stay in their farms, so and big houses, and we used to go there eight to ten. We have to study. Mm -hmm. And uh, then some of them, those who are coming from the uh, uh, you know farm, they used to sit there, and those who are in city, you know, in the village, they used to go back. And fifth standard onwards, it is mandatory you have to sleep in the teacher's house. So you have to eight to ten, mm -hmm. you have to study, and then after ten you have to sleep. And four o'clock they used to you know again come and you have to get up. Four to six you have to study, mm -hmm. and again eight o'clock. You have to be there in the class, in, in the class, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, everybody has to be there in the morning, mm -hmm. in the school. So the time between, you know, 6 to 8 in the morning, only time available. And evening <laughs> again, 6 to 8 is the time available. 
It's only four hours available. Rest all you have to be either teachers, house or school, and they are, they were so dedicated. And our school used to be always top in the district as a model school. And and neighboring village and our our school only uh, up to seven standard. And the neighboring schools used to come. You know, you send your students to our school. And we went to the neighboring school, and only one plus the bus was there. One bus in the morning, one and same used to come in the evening. And the other neighboring schools were coming. You know, you send you do know, boarding and do all those things. And our parents and many of our parents said that you know our kids will uh, you know they will need the food from uh, home only, and there is no bus. How can we send? They said we. They kept one pew, and he used to come and you know take tiffin, our tiffin, and I used to bring at one thirty, and our pew used to take lunch and mm -hmm. evening, and next day morning, and he used to pick every day after me. We went to the school ten kilometers away, and Saturday we used to walk, uh, you know, back to our home. And in those days, elderly people only used to wear the chaplets. You know, we have to wear foot and uh, roads means uh, by walking we can make a road. No roads okay. in those days. Not today. Very beautiful road uh, was this. Uh, you know, so I was part of it. So we used to walk Saturday afternoon and again Monday morning. We used to go two hours, ten kilometers walk. So those were the very you know memorable days, and uh, I think that has uh, helped uh, a lot. You know, probably you know you may be happy to know that uh, many times seasonal diseases have been. You know, That I and other things, over many things. You know, I never got all such things. Maybe I don't know. This is acupuncture or whatever the you know this walking and all. It might have helped. I don't know. But uh, that uh, and and uh, from that high school, I went to college. Uh, then the college Solapur I studied in and then I got engineering government college. Kara. There I learned Marathi. Otherwise, my native plus uh, people speak Kannada. So I learned Marathi there, and then Karadi English was the way I completed my graduation. So this is how our journey, and it was a very interesting journey from small village to the Karad, and then 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 I worked uh, in MIDC about eighteen months, and then then I became a lecturer in one of the institutes. So I was in this sometime. And after seven years, I left and joined our company. And that was a turning point. I I was uh, also uh, you know opportunity at I had Guwahati at Kharagpur, but I preferred Bristol. I did offer me to get a job in Delhi, so I joined Bristol. And Bristol, uh, I was part of the MJSY and then MBA. So this is this is how my childhood. And I am the first you know from my village you know first uh, a person to be an engineer. From my village, and then, and of course, you know, I'm the first Indian to come to the country. But as far as my village, and I, also my Swaz University, 55th uh, their anniversary, the governor, uh, you know, invited me as a chief guest to the Swaz University. Mm -hmm. I went to Pune to address him there as a chief guest of the Swaz University. So some of the great memories. Yes. And I'm after 20 years working in different places, you know, which I mean, India, Noida, Delhi, Goa, Tamil Nadu. I'm coming to my home state. It is a great uh, journey, and and also a great moment for me to work in that. I'm getting a boost in my home state and back to my roots. So <laughs> this is interesting. Your teachers will be so proud of you, sir. you know for having come all this way and before we finally conclude this samvad would you like to share some valuable lessons that you have learned from your journey for management educators and just for educators in general i think uh, there are, uh, i can say some three four points number one there is no substitute for hard work hard work is number one And number two, one has to also get into ahead of time. Ahead of time means you should be the first one to capture the technology. You should never be the last one if you want, to, because twenty-first century editors are those those who don't capture the technology, not those who don't read and write. So that is why number two point is one has to capture the technology. First, should not be the last. 
Number three, what I learned is many, you know, I, I read some of the books and all these things nowadays, and also selection of some of the simple university vice chancellors and all I get into. So, I, and a lot of policy making. And what I learned is that the third and most important thing you should never leave Indian. You should be always grounded. Yes. The leadership the humility is going to play important role. Indian tools are important. Uh, otherwise, you know that uh, our uh, you know Einstein he was a great scientist, but he was arrogant. So, but leadership with humility means mm, the fifth level of leadership. That is, you are leader, you are competent leader, but at the same time you are dumb. Yes. So that is what the number three and number four. I always, you know, as and when I read. I realize when I read more and more, I realize I don't know anything. Mm. So that hungry, hungry to learn, you should never finish. You should never think I reached the Everest. The moment you think you reach the Everest, and if you make any moment from that Everest, you are going to come. So you should be humble enough to admit that someone else is better at something and wise enough to learn myself. This is what, you know, these are the four five points. I think they are important. In life, and we always keep on going, and we keep on fighting our Everest. But we never reach. But the Everest will be always ahead of us. And that is what you know. I when I was looking for and make their journey as a memorable journey. And then also you have to look back and you see that contribution is going to play important. Wherever you go, you should make a contribution. In your Workplace may change, but your contribution will remain as a mess. That's what you think. My, my, I must, uh, you know, this is what I think people should do. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing so generously. And uh, on the occasion of Teacher's Day, uh, our regards to you and happy Teacher's Day. May Thank we have you. more teachers like you, sir, and keep inspiring others. And I'm sure, uh, you know, with your vision, I am Nagpur is going to see greater heights in the days to come. Thank you very much for your time, sir. It was such a great Thank pleasure much. talking to you. Thank you very much. Nice interacting. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir.